Hello and welcome to DMN part 1 about decision tables. I'm Valentin Zickner and I'm going to show you today how you can create a business process with a decision table in. Let's get started and first we are going to create a new app. We call it loan request app and in that app we then need to create a new process. So let's create a new model. Let's call that process then loan approval. That process is going to be uh, quite simple. So we are going to create a first step with a user task. So when we click on that start event, uh, we uh, use a user task key here, loan request intake. And then next, we are going to assign a form to that. So that's our loan request intake form. And in this form, we then go ahead and add the text field, uh, for example, our name number field or the age. We could restrict that actually here with some validations, minimum of zero. So we wouldn't like to have anybody with a negative age. And then we can add another field. So let's add here a select single for the country. That country is going to have a few static items. So we could also choose one of the existing items in here. We are going for static. We add a new item, value is what is going to be stored and text it is, is what is vis visible. So USA, United States, North America, then uh, UK, United Kingdom, and next is uh, Netherlands, and last maybe uh, Switzerland. With that, we have a few different fields in here. And uh, let's also add here the uh, loan amount. So another number field. We say for that one that we would like to have it formatted. Uh, we can choose here the uh, separation. I am just going for a dot. Let's make all of those fields required. We can simply do that by pressing that small little star here or um, check the required flag uh, here on the right side. That's basically the same. And as a next step, we can then go ahead and create a an decision task. Let's place this here and connect it to the sequence flow. We can call that evaluate, evaluate, uh, loan, evaluate loan request. And here we say we would like to have a decision table reference for now. Evaluate loan request. And uh, in here, we now are able to add a few fields. So by uh, clicking on new input, we can change the first field. So let's call that field here age. Uh, it automatically recommends here basically the different variables uh, which we have inside our process. We can simply say we would like to have the age here. And next is the country, uh, which we can also pre-select here. It knows it's a string basically. And then uh, the next field is the amount. And here we are going for a number obviously, since the amount was also a number. With that actually, we are done with the input fields. We are not going to do anything based on the name. Our output, you can also add multiple with the plus here. I'm just going for one approval state, approval state also as the variable. And uh, we can directly say here, uh, we are going to uh, have multiple uh, values, declined, review, and approved. So that is basically uh, the different output values which we have. And now we can only insert those here. So let's start with some content here. In case the age is less than 21, uh, in this case, we would like to always decline it. Uh, country and amount do not matter. So you can just leave the dash basically in there. And the next one would be then 21 and uh, older or equal in this case. And for the country, we could say in here, once we added something, that we would like to have Netherlands or um, uh, Switzerland. 
and then we can just select is in the FLU, write them in double quote and just separate them by a comma. Let's say the amount should be here at least 100,000. So let's make that larger or equal. And in this case, we would like to go for review. Um, now another one, when we say um, the age is larger or equal than 21, and we are simply going here for the same, only in case it's not in those. So it's basically the other two. We are going for 100,000 here again, and again, larger or equal. But in this case, we simply decline it to have something else in here. Now the last rule which we are going to add is basically here uh, in case uh, it's larger or equal than 21 and um, the amount is basically less than 100,000 since we have everything else already uh, covered. So with that, we just say in this case, yeah, let's approve. Now, uh, based on this decision table, we can have here different hit policies which we can use. First is going ahead and just deciding basically from the beginning to the end, the first rule which hits, that one we are going to use. We could use that one, it certainly should work. Unique is the one which I would like to use, but let's talk about the other ones first. So any is going ahead and uh, allowing you to, um, that multiple rules are hit as long as they have the same approval state here then at the end. So when the outcome is the same, then any basically uh, is a great fit, even if you have multiple which are hit. Priority would go ahead and allow us uh, to use that output priority, which we have over here, and say, yeah, declined, use that first one, and reviewed and then approved. Uh, it would actually provide us the same result and first in this case, uh, since uh, our rules are basically unique, so always only one is basically hit. Rule order uh, is giving you multiple results and those uh, just based on the rule order. For us, it would always be just one result since uh, basically um, we only have one. However, then we would receive a list of uh, always one result. Output order would also give us multiple results, only this time uh, sorted by our approval state then basically. So declined would be first, approved would be last, and review in the middle. And collect would simply go ahead and um, basically aggregate some information. There you can then decide what you would like to have for a collection operation. So there you could count basically, and with count you should actually always uh, just receive one. Now unique is basically the one which is ensuring that exactly one rule is hit. So it's ensuring that uh, our decision table is basically uh, consistent. With that, we have our decision table basically done. And we can now say after that, that we would like to have a decision point with an exclusive gateway. Now we have three different outcomes of that decision table. Let me start with uh, basically uh, one first. And that one here is basically uh, then loan approved. And uh, then we can put another one basically over here. Let's move it a little bit more to the right. That one here would be loan uh, declined. And then we also have, in addition to that, uh, the other case where we need to have an additional review. So review loan request. And uh, then after our review, we need to continue basically. So let's say that one here is approved. This one is declined. And this one here is needs review. Let's move a little bit more that it looks nice. And now we can start adding conditions here. So in this one, uh, we would like to have the approval state equals two, and then it's approved. And here we would like to have the approval state equals to declined. 
And on the last one, we can then just say that's our default flow. So when we have nothing else, then please go ahead and use this. Now here, we can uh, still say uh, on the review form that we would like to have then basically and now uh, an additional form, review loan request. In that form, we are going to use a subform first of all. And that subform we can use to visualize the data which we have had before. So here we can uh, use our loan um, uh, review intake form. And in addition to that, I also would like to have a um, multi-line text. And that multi-line text is basically uh, then our review comment, which we uh, can add. So a user can add some information in here. And now we simply would like to have some outcomes. So let's add one uh, approve. Value is then approved. And another one for decline. And here it's declined. And um, we have here the review uh, state, which we now can use in our um, process, basically to decide in which direction we would like to go. So let's say uh, the approved one is basically going up here. And then we also have a declined one, which is going down here. Obviously, we don't have another review. So that after that one, it's basically the end. So approved is going here. And we say the condition expression review state is equals to approved. And for this one, the client, we are going ahead and saying here, review state is equals to declined. Now let's save that. Uh, as a next step, we can use that small little cloud icon, publish it. And once published, we can go ahead and execute it with flowable work. So here we can say now new work. And it asks us if we would like to start our loan approval, since that's the only process I have. So let's say we are here the requester one, our age of 35. Uh, we are from the country. Uh, Switzerland now, and we would like to have 500,000. When I complete that now, we see that we are in the review process where we have the possibility uh, to give a review comment. Uh, this should be approved. Let's press approve. And then we can click here on the history and we see actually which path it took. So it went up here. And when we click on decisions, we see that the second rule here was hit. So we were part of basically uh, Netherlands and Switzerland and the loan was above 100,000. And with that, our result was reviewed. You also see that rules three and four are executed here as well. And that for uh, rule three, the basically country uh, didn't match while for rule four, uh, the amount did not match. Let's execute it one more time. Here we can now go ahead and request a two and say we would like to have the same age, but this time we are in the United States and we pick again 500,000 and complete this. And in here we see now in the history when we click on decisions that this went automatically to the client. And in the diagram, we also see it took basically the path to decline down here. With that, we basically already reached the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new about decision tables in Flowable. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.